What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be doing my first cutting board. Let's head into the garage and get started. So like the title says, I've never done a cutting board before. Well, I guess that's not totally accurate. I mean, I think I did one in like seventh or eighth grade shop class. So when it came to planning out this project, I went to my local like specialty lumber yard uh, because when it comes to these like imported types of hardwoods, you're not gonna find them at your local big box type of store. Um, but I went down to the lumber yard I was talking to the people there and normally you got to buy since they're priced by the board foot a 12 by 12 by three quarters of an inch thick i think is what's considered a board foot normally you got to buy the whole board so it's like a whole eight foot or ten foot board um i really didn't want to do that a couple reasons firstly i don't really have a way to transport 10 foot boards they kind of hang out the back of my charger um secondly i'm only building one cutting board now if i was building you know a bunch of them to sell or whatever that'd be a different story i'd plan for that and be able to i'd want these eight or ten foot boards but for this project i didn't want that I really didn't need that much wood i didn't want that much expensive spare wood floating around my garage but they just happened to have a drop bin or a cutoff bin so i was able to go through that and see what they had on hand unfortunately with everything going on with COVID right now, with whatever else is causing lumber issues, I wasn't able to get most of what I wanted. I mean, I wanted Bloodwood, they didn't have any. I wanted Yellowheart, they didn't have any. Um, but what I was able to get was some white curly maple, some Wenge, some zebra wood, and some lace wood. And I had some walnut that I had bought uh, for a, another project that I just never ended up doing. So I had the walnut laying around, so I'll use that. Now, I'm gonna be doing kind of a smaller cutting board, more like a cheese board, I guess. So it's gonna be nine inches wide by about 15 inches long, about an inch thick. Um, so these drops were perfect. I mean, I think the shortest one is 20 inches. So that gives me some leeway on each end to trim off any any issues or any excess and it's just easier to process lumber this size than eight or ten foot boards so like i said my board's going to be an inch thick so the first step that i'm going to do is rip each board down to his required thickness now I've actually set the fence on my table saw to an inch and an eighth. And then extra eighth inch is just to give me room, you know, for, for planing it smooth, sanding it, whatever. Um, being a little over an inch thick won't be a problem. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is start ripping these boards down to an inch and an eighth. And then we'll go from there. Apparently my camera cut out while I was recording the time lapse of cutting all these boards down to size. So unfortunately, you guys are gonna miss out on that riveting, ripping action I had going on there. Um, but now that I got everything cut to an eighth, an eighth, an inch and an eighth thick or high, um, now I gotta start laying out my pattern. Um, oh, I also took the time to take a couple pieces of the white maple and cut some one inch wide, one inch. I'm having a great time with numbers today. An eighth inch wide strips. And then a couple, I believe these are about a quarter inch wide. Um, and that's just so I can add these into the patterns as little separator strips, or little accent strips. We'll see, I figure I'd take the time and rip a couple of those down too. But now that I've got everything cut to size, I gotta start laying out my patterns. Um, I don't know how I want this to come out just yet. So I'm gonna take some time, try some different patterns, take some pictures of them, and then decide on what pattern I wanna go with. Now 
now that I, I think I've got my pattern all figured out here, um, I'm ready to start the glue up process. And to start that, the first thing I'm gonna do is sand each gluing surface with some 120 grit. And that's just to take anything off the surface that might interfere with the, with the glue and to give the wood a little more tooth to help that glue adhere. So let's start sanding. All right, now that I got everything glued and clamped up, I'm just gonna have to give this time to set up and then I'll come back and scrape off all of the glue that oozed out from all the joints. Um, I did use Type Bond Type 3. It is waterproof, that way you don't have to worry about the glue failing when the cutting board gets washed and whatever else. So, um, I also used these two parallel clamps on the bottom. And what that did was allow me to get the cutting board or the wood in place. And then I know the bottom side will be perfectly flat against those rails. I did wrap those rails in blue tape so that it'll make it easier to remove later. Um, I did the same thing on top here with, with uh, pipe clamps. Uh, I'm able to use the pipe clamps to clamp it together with the pipe sitting right against the top and that keeps the top level. Um, you saw that I went and just kind of knocked the, the boards down, made sure they were all tight against the parallel clamps, and then I added the bar clamps. And then I added just a few extra clamps just where I saw it needed some extra clamping power uh, because there wasn't quite enough ooze, enough glue coming out yet. Um, you don't want to over clamp it just enough that, you know, some of the glue starts to work its way out from between the boards. And you know you're tight enough. You don't need to go and add, you know, some gorilla torque to your clamps. So let that set up. And I'll come back and clean all the glue off later. Now that the glue has had a few hours to set up, I'm gonna pop everything out of the clamps and use a simple paint scraper to scrape off any of the glue that was squeezed out when everything was put in the clamps. Um, I forgot to mention that I, when, I, when I clamped everything together, these two edge pieces are not part of the cutting board. They're just sacrificial boards used to protect the cutting board and also to kind of even out the pressure from the clamps. So let's get everything out of the clamps and uh, scrape off all the excess glue. Now that I've got all the wood glue cleaned off the surface, I mean, there's still a little bit left, but I got the majority of it off. Um, this is probably the point in the project where I would say, let's run this thing through a power planer. Even though it's not cut to size yet, it's still long, there's still, the edges aren't even. I think this would be a good time to run it through a power planer because any snipe or anything like that that may happen to the ends of the board are gonna be trimmed off anyway. But I don't own a power planer. Um, I've thought about getting one, but I don't really do enough projects like this that I can really justify the cost. At least not yet. Who knows? Maybe in the future. Um, so I did go out and pick up a bench plane. Um, once again, I probably haven't used one of these since junior high shop class. 
So I did what you guys are doing. Went on YouTube, looked up how to sharpen the blade and how to set it all up. Um, I think I'm just about ready to start playing in this thing. Let's, uh, let's give it a shot, see what happens. There is something really satisfying about that. I mean, to go from the condition it was in with the wood on the surface and feeling some inconsistencies to almost smooth enough that you don't really need any finishing. I mean, it's amazing what one of these things can do. Uh, yeah, I am really happy with that. I still, I do feel a couple of spots where it may be bound up a little bit and yeah, maybe there's a couple of spots on there that could use to be sanded out, which it will. So that kind of leads to the next step. I'm gonna be sanding this thing down. I'm gonna give it a, an initial sanding before I even trim it to its final size. Um, just in case I find other spots that still need to be planed after I sand it a few times. So I am gonna sand it a few, starting with some 120 grit, probably 120, 180, maybe 220, 240, somewhere around there before I even trim it to size. And that way, if I do come across an area that needs more planing, then I'll do that. And then I'll cut this thing to final size and do some more sanding. But for now, I'm just gonna run it with some uh, 120 grit, maybe go up to 180 or something like that. We'll see what the 120 does and uh, go from there. care of the initial sanding on the cutting board I cut it to its final size which is 9 by 15 um, now that I got that done I'm gonna take care of the corners and the edges so I'm gonna be adding a chamfer on my router table and I'm gonna start off with a very slight chamfer and then slowly walk that in till I get to a point that I want I'm also gonna start with chamfering the end grain first and then that way any, hopefully, hopefully there won't be any tear out, but if there is, then it should clean it up, hopefully when I get to doing the, uh, the edge grain, but we'll see. So I'm gonna start off with a very slight chamfer along the edge grain and walk that in until I get to a point that I like. Now that I'm in the middle of my sanding process, I mean, I started with some 120, took it to 180, and I just finished with some 240 grit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the surface down with some water. I'm not gonna soak it, just get it nice and damp and let that dry. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna raise the grain, and then I'm gonna go over it with some 320 grit. And that should make this thing super smooth. What that's also gonna do is the first time this thing gets washed, since the grain has already been raised and sanded down, 
I shouldn't have to worry about this thing feeling fuzzy or weird after, after its first wash. That will have already been taken care of at this point. So I'm gonna spray it, let it dry, hit it with 320, then I should be ready to uh, finish it. After wetting it and letting it dry, I sanded it with 320 grit. And then just for giggles, I wet it and let it dry again. And then I sanded it with 400. Um, may have been a little overkill. I don't think it really needed it, but this thing is like buttery smooth. So now comes the moment of truth. I'm gonna finish it off with some food grade mineral oil. Just gonna put some of this on, wipe it in, and uh, let's see how this thing looks. After adding the mineral oil to finish the board, there is the finished product. A little bit of board wax, and this thing will be ready for years of looking good in the kitchen. Well, there you go. I really enjoyed working on this project. Um, just goes to show you don't need an electric planer to get really nice results. Might take a little bit longer, need a little more patience, but you can get there. So, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on the next one.